Hello, I'm Kevin Zettel, a technical marketing engineer at Infoblox, and today we're here to talk about Infoblox's new integration with Extreme Network's Extreme Management Center. First, I'll do an overview of the Extreme Management Center integration and what it provides. Then, I'll show you some use cases for the integration. Then, I'll show you how to set everything up and then show you a working example. Then, I'll show you some additional integrations and how they work. Finally, I'll show you where to find additional information that you might want. Now let's start with an overview. With Outbound API, we're able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox's ecosystem license. Using Extreme Management Center, admin can get devices on Infoblox with context and automate access to these devices without lifting a finger. Additionally, with this integration, Extreme Network Admin can get information on devices when Infoblox discovers a device and tries to access malicious content. In the end, this allows admin to prioritize threats, revoke access to devices, and authenticate assets with information shared between the two devices automatically, and in return, increase ROI on both products. Currently, Extreme Networks manages the wired and wireless connections while alerting teams when network issues are discovered and easily enforces policies across the entire infrastructure. But, Infoblox has easy and timely access to additional network changes that are necessary to manage connections. Also, DNS is a gap that traditional tools don't secure, and as such, alerts can't be made. Plus, Infoblox has visibility into the entire infrastructure that helps provide context to manage threats and policies. The benefit of this integration is to help with these problems by providing visibility into network changes and DNS threats, while eliminating silos between network and security tools and allowing for quick, necessary, and automatic responses to challenges that IT and security teams are having. In return, increasing the ROI on the security investments already made. Let's look at the security use case. Here, a user tries to make a DNS request to a domain that isn't allowed. Next, the DNS request is blocked by Infoblox. Infoblox ecosystem templates are then triggered, sending information about the user to Extreme Management Center. Finally, the IP address is added to an in-system group, which you can use to create custom policies for. With these custom policies, you can change the user's access or remove them from the network automatically. Now let's see that in action. Here, I'm making a simple dig request to example.com which emulates a DNS request that a user can make. And here you can see that the next domain was handed out from the Infoblox appliance with the information in the additional section of the return field. When I head over to Extreme Management Center side and refresh, we can see the MAC of the host was added to the end system group. Let's look at a use case where the Infoblox can add a new asset to the Extreme Network side. Here, an admin creates a host or reservation or a new DHCP lease is obtained or a device is discovered on the network. In return, this causes the ecosystem templates to be triggered, sending information to the Extreme Management Center with information about the host, reservation, or DHCP lease, or discovered device. Finally, in this case, the host is added to an end system group, which you can use to automatically give network access according to the information. Now let's see that integration in action. Here, I'm going to create a fixed IP on the IP 10, 60, 32, 52. Here you can see the MAC of the device. When I hit refresh, you can see that the XMC synced at extensible attribute was updated with a timestamp when the information was synced on the Extreme Management Center. When I head over to the Extreme Management Center and hit refresh, we can see that the device was added to the end system group. Now let's see how to set everything up. First, you'll want to go to community.infoblox.com and download the templates for the Extreme Networks integration. Second, you want to add the in-system groups and set up the distributed IPS on the Extreme Management Center. Finally, you want to set up your Infoblox grid for the integration. To do this, add some extensible attributes, then add the templates, and add the endpoints, and add the notifications. For a final note, you'll need to purchase and download Infoblox's ecosystem thread-wide license in order to activate the integration's capabilities.
Now I'll be showing you how to set everything up on Extreme Management Center. First, you want to go to Control, Access Control, Group Editor, All Groups, and System Group, and add the end system group you want to use. Just simply insert the name, then select the type. Do note that only the end system MAC and the end system IP will work with this integration. Next, go to Connect, Administration, Distributed IPS, Services, and add the regex found here or in the deployment guide. Then, add the end system group to add IPs to, and for the end system group, select IP or MAC. If you select IP, then the end system group must be an end system IP, and if you select MAC, then the end system group must be an end system MAC. The distributed IPS is only used on security events when Infoblox doesn't know the MAC address of the user. Do note, if the MAC address is known by Extreme Networks and not Infoblox, then Extreme Networks will automatically add it to the end system group with the MAC. Finally, go to the configuration and set the module enabled to true to enable distributed IPS. Then click save and you are done. Now I'll be showing you how to set everything up on Infoblox's side. First, you want to go to Administration, Extensible Attributes, and here you want to create seven extensible attributes, including XMC and System Group, which is a custom field that determines the end system group to add the assets to on non-security events. XMC Location, which is the custom field that determines the location field for the Extreme Network's end system entry custom field upon creation. XMC Remediate Group, which is a custom field that determines the end system group to add assets to for security events. XMC Remediate on Event defines if a security event or log should be added to Extreme Networks. XMC Remediate at provides the last time a security event was sent to Extreme Networks. XMC Sync defines if the device should be updated or added to the end system group. XMC Sync at provides the last time that an asset was added or modified on the Extreme Networks. Next, you want to go to Grid, Ecosystem, Templates. And here you want to add two templates for the Extreme Networks integration that can be found on the Infoblox community website. These include the EN Asset and EN Security templates. Here you can see that the templates are just a simple JSON file with some simple logic that you can manipulate to do different things. Now back in the Infoblox, you want to go to Grid, Ecosystem, Outbound Endpoint. Here, you want to add an endpoint. Under the General tab, you want to add the URI of the Extreme Management Center instance you are sending the information to, as well as add the name and vendor for the endpoint. You also need to add the username and password for the Extreme Management Center integration. Then, add the Infoblox Grid's username and password for the WAPI credentials. Next, you can add a validation. However, for demo purposes, I'm not going to be using one. And here, I'm using the current Grid Master. However, for production, it is a best practice to use the Grid Master candidate. In the Session Management tab, have the log level set to debug. However, for production, it is best to set the log level to info or higher. Then, when the session template has been selected, the parameters attached to that session template will be loaded, and you will be able to edit them here starting NIOS 8.3 or later. Finally, for the extensible attributes, we have none. Next, you want to go to Notifications and add a notification for the events. And here you can decide what type of events you want to have triggered the ecosystem templates. A notification is the way that we connect the template and endpoint to the grid using some simple rules. Under the General tab, you want to create a name for the notification and select the name of the targeted endpoint that you're using. In this case, I'm using Extreme Networks endpoint that I just showed. Then, under the Rules tab, you can set the rules you want to have trigger the template. In this case, DNS RPC events with a source IP that matches the CIDR 10.0.0.0/8 will trigger the template. Under RPC and ADP events, you will have an additional option under the tab called deduplication. Here, you want to enable RPC event deduplication to avoid triggering the template for the same event more than once. Here, you can choose to log all the dropped events and simply choose the item available and click the arrow to move them over. For demo purposes, I'm not going to be activating deduplication. Under the Templates tab, you can decide which templates you want to have trigger when an event that matches the rule occurs. Here you'll see that once it is selected, that the instance variable that are attached to the template are shown. And here's where you can decide what to set the instance variables to. In this case, we have an instance variable called Default Remediate Group, which determines the end system group 
to add the assets into for security events if the extensible attribute XMC Remediate Group isn't defined. Finally, I want to show you one more thing. If we were to select one of the notifications for the assets events, we can see that the deduplication tab is disabled. And under the templates tab, we can see two additional instance variables. First is default and system group, which determines the end system group to add assets into if the extensible attribute XMC end system group isn't defined. And the second one is only managed assets, which is a true or false value and determines if an unmanaged device should be added to Extreme Management Center. Now let's see the integration in action. Here I'm going to be adding an IPv4 fixed address. And when I hit refresh, you will see that the extensible attributes will be updated. In this case, no operating system is present. Then, on the Extreme Management Center, you can see that the asset was added to the Infoblox Mac and System Group. Now I'm going to add an IP over a host. Again, I will hit refresh, and you will see the extensible attribute will be updated. In this case, the operating system is known and will be updated on the Extreme Management Center. Then, on the Extreme Management Center, you can see that the asset was added to the Infobox Mac and System Group, and the operating system is present. Now let's see how the security event works. Here, I'm making a simple dig request to the Infobox grid with the domain name that will be blocked. A dig command is just emulating a DNS request that could be made by a user. Here we can see NX domain was handed out by the Infoblox appliance with the information on the additional section of the return field. On the Extreme Management Center, we can see that the MAC of the user who made the bad request was added to the Infoblox block and system group. Then, on Infoblox's side, if we were to hit refresh, we can see that the extensible attributes were updated for the IP of the host who made the bad request. Here we can see that the extensible attribute XMC Remediate at was updated. Finally, if you can take away one thing from this video, it's that with Outbound API, we're now able to respond faster to network changes with the help of Infoblox's ecosystem license. Using extreme networks, admin can get devices on Infoblox with context on automate access to these devices without lifting a finger. Additionally, with this integration, Extreme Networks admin can get information on devices when Infoblox discovers a device tried to access malicious content. In the end, this allows admin to prioritize threats and revoke access to devices and authenticate assets with information shared between the two devices automatically, and in return, increase ROI on both products. Infoblox and Extreme Networks provides you with some additional integrations besides the one shown in this video. The first additional integration includes data that Extreme Networks is able to obtain from users on the network can be shared with Infoblox. This data includes the device's status, authentication type, switch IP, switch port, switch location, profile, username, reason, and also the time it was updated on Infoblox. The second additional integration allows for Extreme Networks to share the MAC address of all the clients with Infoblox in order to create a MAC filter to prevent an attacker from grabbing a lease. Thirdly, with the integration shown in this video, Infoblox can inform extreme networks when tunneling or DDoS attacks are detected from affected users. This way, extreme networks can disconnect the infected users automatically. All documentation related to the Infoblox and extreme networks integration can be found on the Infoblox community website. More information on the additional integrations can be found on the GitHub page in the link below. Well, thank you for watching. If you have any other concerns or questions, you can find me or any of the other experts at Infoblox on the Infoblox community website. Thank you for your time, and have a great rest of your day.